Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Monty. Today is going to be a new topic that I want to talk to you guys about. But first thing first, for those of you who are used to my channel, um, this might be a different lighting option that you guys have seen on my tank. Now, usually I do my videos during daylight or when my tank is going through the daylight cycle. So it's bright and you can see everything. But um, today I'm recording during the night phase of my tank uh, where it's, it goes to a four hour moonlight phase so i just wanted to change it up a little bit and show you guys a different show you my tank mine in a different light uh no pun intended <laughs> so today i'm going to talk about two different topics and i do have a special announcement so stay tuned through throughout the whole video first topic i'm going to talk about is tank mates and tank mate behavior what I mean by that is when you add fishes or livestock to, especially fishes, to an established tank, you have to be very careful that, that the fishes that you already have in your tank are not super aggressive and they're going to be receptive to the new tank made that you add. Um, especially if they're used to having the whole tank to themselves, um, they might not you know take it normally if you add a new tank mate uh, tangs are one of the examples tangs um, are very territorial and they hate sharing their space with other tanks so you have to be very careful when you add those kind of fishes clowns are similar to that but they're not as aggressive I mean what if they're if there's an anemone in the tank and a clown is hosting on the anemone now he's definitely not gonna share that space with another clown unless you introduce them at the same time then they'll fight over it and they'll will be the they'll go by the hierarchy but if you have if your livestock in the tank is already taking a territory and for some reason he happens to be the aggressive type and you add somebody new you're gonna have fights in your tank even peaceful fish like clown and I, I, I'm the prime example, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, in my last video, you guys may or may not know, if you see my last video, I did add a new clownfish to this tank. Um, I added the purple pseudo, and I added a fire ice clownfish. Very beautiful fish. Now, the problem I ran into right after I introduced him to this tank is that my existing clowns, the two clowns that you guys see, they did not like the new guy. Maybe they were jealous because he looks prettier or he was very different. But the day after I added that fire as clownfish, these two clowns were going at him. Every time I would come near my tank, I would see these two chasing him away, bullying him around, wouldn't, wouldn't let him share their space. And... To the point where he would be, the fire ice would be at a spot in the tank where these two never go. They would go after him in that spot and just chase him away. And the little fire ice little guy, he tried his best for about two to three weeks to fight these guys back. But I guess in the end it was two versus one was overpowering and they ended up killing him. Uh, one day fire ice was there, the next day I couldn't find him at all. And then, you know, upon further inspection I see him. I found him on the sand bed, laying dead. His body was half eaten, probably by the crabs. I had to remove him. It was a very sad moment. I've never had my livestock kill each other. Uh, never had that problem. You know, when when I had the orange and white clown, when I added the black and white clown, you know, they got along fine. But then this happened after I added the fire ice. So I guess. Different species react differently to other species being added, especially, I guess, when it comes to clown. I guess these two clowns are really not fan of the hybrid clown, the fire ice. Maybe if I had a two at the same time, then maybe it would have been a fair fight, but one on two was not really fair. So that's that's a lesson for you guys, especially if you haven't experienced it. You know, everyone thinks it's never going to happen to me, but then it does. And this leads me to our second topic of this video. Now, when you guys purchase fishes, there are some fishes 
that are prone to jumping out of your tank. So, usually wrasses, um, pseudos, firefish, gobies. These type of fishes are prone to jumping out of the tank. So, you would have to have a cover on at all times or they'll just, they're just going to jump out the first chance they get. Now, those who have been watching my, following my channel for a while or have seen some of my videos, you guys know I have a, I have a yellow uh, dotty. I have a yellow dotty fish, which is really beautiful. And he's one of our, my oldest uh, fishes in this tank since the beginning. So he's been there for a really, really long time, almost two years. And I have lost him since my last video. And I have lost him because he jumped out of my tank, fell onto the floor. No one noticed that he came out of the tank and he was dead. He died overnight. And... The circumstances is very, is very, I mean, I don't know the right word. The circumstance he jumped out of is very, very slim. I'll tell you why. On my tank, on the top, I have a glass. It covers one-third of the tank. That's where my LED goes on top of the glass. Then, then the front half of my tank, I have an egg crate cover this way I can feed the tank you know without moving the glass so I removed the second half of the glass and put an egg crate um, white egg crate cover on there so this way I can access the water or feed the fish but then on the back part of my tank where the overflow uh, boxes and the return um, pipe is there is about two to three inch gap from the cover the glass cover to the the rim the back rim of this tank there's about two to three inches and that's how that's where he came out of the my yellow dye. That's where he jumped out of. So within you know, all, all he needed was two to three inches of space and he jumped out. And he's been in my tank for about two years. So usually this will happen to new fishes, but this has happened to a fish that has been in my tank for two years and he has no reason to jump out. So that those are the two topics that I want to cover, and I learned it the hard way by losing livestock. And, and and it was really heartbreaking for me to lose two fish in one week, and especially when I had nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? I had no control over the situation, so it hurts. Um, so that's that's it about my tank. I mean, there's nothing else going on with this tank. Now, I do want to let you guys know about this new project that I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to be doing... Um, I'm going to be setting up a nano reef tank. It's going to be a Pico nano reef tank. It's a, I have a two and a half gallon um, tank that I came across recently. So I've thought about doing a two and a, a net two and a half gallon nano reef tank with that. So I might, you know, from this video going forward, there might be a weekly video about me setting up this two and a half gallon nano reef tank from the beginning. So every week i might post a video on give you guys an update from the start till you know however long i'm i'm decide to make the video blog about so stay tuned for that it'll be a weekly nano reef uh video and then whenever there's something new going with this tank my 45 gallon i'll update you guys on that but going forward my focus is going to be on my nano reef tank so stay tuned for that it's going to be exciting especially for those of you who are looking to get into this hobby uh you're gonna you're gonna like watching this you know um, as you guys may or may know i'm a budget reefer so i'm gonna keep it keep the same flow with that next project of mine so i want to thank you guys for watching my video stay tuned i will discuss more about my new project in the next video